Turbocharger sizing is probably one of the most important things when building a turbocharged car or uh, turbocharging something in general. And a lot of people seem to overlook some stuff or rather mm, take some things as granted, but they really aren't. And uh, there are a lot of misconceptions about this, which I want to clear up today. First of all, I want to give you two examples of, well, kind of badly sized turbochargers. One would be a stock 1AT. It's not necessarily badly sized, but it is kind of not really that well sized for an enthusiast that wants to make a bit of top end power as well, because those turbochargers on the 150 and 180 horsepower versions are quite small. And if you, for example, flash a stage one tune or whatever on them, uh, you tend to see that, especially in a dyno. The bottleneck in this case would be the exhaust housing and exhaust wheel. They are very small, even in comparison to the already small uh, compressor side. But you can see that particularly when accelerating through the rev range, the boost will kick in hard, especially with a stage one or so from about 2,500 RPM, you will have maximum boost and it will taper off from about 5,000 RPM to limiter to back down at about 0.7, 0.8 bar, depending on how worn your turbo already is. Um, maybe there are cracks in the exhaust housing, maybe the actuator spring is worn out. Um, so this might vary downwards a bit. Uh, if you put in a new turbocharger, it might be able to hold up to one bar boost. As soon as you can see the boost dropping off and also even power dropping off uh, on higher RPMs, that's a indicator that the turbocharger is too small to make more power up top. While yes, due to the calculation of RPM and torque, the power, so the actual horsepower at higher RPMs will be still stable and will may even keep rising. The uh, car does not feel as quick and it feels like it's out of breath at the top. The other way or the other end of the spectrum would be a turbocharger that's way too large. On my channel I have featured in the past my um, Miata or MX-5 however you want to call it in your, in your region with a 1.6 engine that has a GT35 turbo strap to it. Yes there is reason behind that but if you would want to use it for a responsive setup that's not really the point in this case but that turbocharger would be way too large. Looking at the way it spools, I only hit full boost at about 5,800 RPM. So that's not really that usable. You would need either a better turbocharger or a higher revving engine to get a greater power band. But in this case, a turbo that spools at 5,800 RPM with an engine that has a red line of about 7,500 RPM is not much use if you want to have a lot of fun and if you want some torque down low and not just be fast at highway speed. So this is where the selection comes in and why it's important to choose correctly. While you might look at different turbos and the different sizes and how much horsepower they might be capable of, might, might one might be capable of 600 horsepower and one might be capable of a thousand horsepower and your goal only might be 600 but you're saying mm, i may go up to a thousand or maybe up to 800 at a later time why do i not purchase the larger one right now so i don't have to purchase twice well then you are going to have to live with the worst response time the best thing is to select a turbocharger that suits your horsepower goal so for our explanation i will choose or will list three different engines uh, for example we will select one uh, a small displacement engine which would be a 1at a second one which would be a 2jz and a bigger one which would be a barra or four liter uh, ford inline six engine so these engines have kind of four different or three different classes of capacity. They have 1.8 liters, three liters and four liters. The reason behind that is even if you try to make the same amount of horsepower on all of them, they all would be better off running a different turbocharger to the other. So as I said, our goal would be 600 horsepower. Well, looking for a turbocharger that is able to achieve 600 horsepower, there are some from Garrett, for example, from Borg Warner, 
and other brands as well. There are plenty out there. Most of the horsepower specifications that you can find on these turbochargers is using the compressor wheel. What the compressor wheel is actually specified at or what it is capable of. This can be seen on the most bigger manufacturers have a compressor map listed. I have a video on how to read a compressor map as well. You can find that in the description. There I explain how to actually read a compressor map. But most of the horsepower specifications on those turbos are based on the compressor map and what the compressor can actually achieve. That's actually a good thing because that's how much fresh air the turbo would be able to flow and how much power it would be supplying if that compressor would be utilized to the full capacity. Let's take, for example, the G25 660. This is pretty much a very common turbo for the four-cylinder class and would fit on a 180 pretty well. There are also two variants of the G25, the 550 and the 660, and they just came out with newer variants that are actually capable of a little bit more power. So they are almost at the 700 mark for the bigger one. With our 600 horsepower goal in mind, we would say, well, I can almost get away with the smaller G25 of both because they can make 600 horsepower. Actually, kind of, no. Let me explain. These horsepower goals in most of cases, in most on most turbochargers are, as I said, for the compressor wheel. Yes, that's clear, but they are also given the surroundings and the surrounding components are in a pretty optimal scenario. But so that means, for example, a tubular manifold that flows really well, an exhaust that flows well and doesn't have back pressure. Then you're looking at a very big intercooler you are looking at a not very restrictive head and manifold setup and sometimes even E85. While on Garrett and Borg Warner, this is not the case with the fuel, but on some other ones it might be. On Garrett, if you are running pump fuel uh, with the G25 660 or 550, you are not going to reach 550 wheel horsepower. That's because these specified numbers are at the crank. And even then, crank horsepower might be difficult to achieve and you are only able to do that when all of the surroundings are basically perfect. So you are saying, well, but I might be able to achieve 600 horsepower with that turbo because, well, let's say I only, or let's say I don't care if it is like 20 less or whatever, which obviously isn't a big deal. But the thing is why you might want to choose a bigger turbo if you are close to that limit is the exhaust side. The exhaust side is the important factor here. And that is also why putting a G25, which the first number of the Garrett turbos, for example, is the number that is telling you what the exhaust side is. So the turbine wheel size, not in millimeters, but the class of turbo. Um, the 660 is just the horsepower number that the compressor is capable of or, and the G25 in this case is the class of turbocharger which is equivalent to the exhaust side so the exhaust or turbine wheel. On other brands that is different for example on Borg Warner they have a naming scheme where the first numbers are the compressor wheel and the second number is the turbine wheel so 7670 is 76 millimeter compressor, but compressor exducer, and 70 millimeter is um, the turbine wheel inducer. So the bigger measurement of both sides. So that's not really easily to judge on what to choose on um, Borg Warner using the Garrett's for example, but it works the same or kind of the same on the other turbos. For example, on Borg Warner, the equivalent to the G25 660 would be the EFR uh, 6758. While yes, the 25 660 might work for a smaller displacement engine, the problem comes when you are looking at the displacement recommendations from Garrett. It says 1.5 liters to 2.5, I think, on the G25. The issue comes when you put them on a bigger engine, such as a 2JZ or an RB26, and you even try to make the same amount of horsepower, 
The problem is going to be you might reach that, but uh, the exhaust back pressure due to the relatively small turbine wheel is going to be relatively high depending on what you want to run or depending on, depending on how much power you actually run and your peripherals. The high exhaust back pressure will cost you power. Again, I have a video on exhaust back pressure or on exhaust manifold back pressure, which is the term I'm referring to now and how that can actually cause power loss if it is too high or if it is there at all. And it will cause power loss in all cases because it will force uh, exhaust gases back into the engine, but that's not the point of this video. Saying this, if you, for example, run a larger displacement engine, your engine is obviously flowing more exhaust gas because there is more displacement, obviously. So you need to get rid of that gas in an easier way. This means you need to upgrade the turbine side. So in this case, on the G25, it's pretty easy. Go to G3660. This is the upgrade you want to go for. If you want to run the same power level, you might say, well, if I go to the G3770, well, I get a bit, little bit more headroom. Yes, but the compressor wheel is going to be heavier and therefore spool slower. So get the smallest turbo you are able to with getting the correct turbine wheel that fits your displacement or fits your engine. The thing is, displacement isn't everything. On a four-cylinder engine, when running E85 instead of pump fuel, you are also going to have more exhaust gas volume. So you might need to run a G30 as well in comparison if you want to reach the same power goal. Same goes for methanol. That is even more exhaust gas volume. And for example, on a rotary, it is even more extreme. 1.3 liters, that's basically, I don't know, I'd say like a 2.6 liter or something. Uh, you could use that as at least twice the capacity in a normal piston engine comparatively. So you have to look out not only at what the turbo is capable of achieving or what the specifications actually say, but also what displacement your engine has and size your turbine wheel accordingly. For example, on our Barra engine, if we want to make 600 horsepower, we would need to go up even further. While there is no turbo that is suitable for that 600 horsepower range at the compressor side and having a big enough exhaust side uh, to support those four liters, the thing to choose here would be the, the smallest compressor side while getting the turbine side that actually suits your engine. So in theory, that would be a G35. 900 which is i think the smallest g35 there is right now and that would spool the best and would be probably the best setup for this engine but you will have a lot of room up top to make more power now there's something that some people might misunderstand we just talked about turbine wheels but there's also exhaust housing are you able to just get a bigger housing instead of a bigger turbo mm, not necessarily while a bigger exhaust housing will give you more top end, the issue is you still have to push all of the exhaust gases past that turbine wheel, which is the same size. So the opening where it is flowing into the turbine wheel and going out of the turbo is still the same size. So you are still getting restricted by this. So while you could use, for example, a G25 660 with a 0.83 or even a 1.01 housing which would be really large get a little bit more top end but you would be still restricted by this volute here and uh, this opening right here in the housing and this would create a bottleneck while it will decrease exhaust manifold back pressure and it will lower egts it's not as good of an option as running a larger turbine in general. So that's something you really wanna look out for. Choose the turbine housing for when you want your power to come on. Get the smaller housing if you wanna get it to come on earlier and have a little less top end if you are not running as much RPM, for example. And it's just there to tweak the final 
basically the final power curve a bit. So when you want your peak torque, your peak horsepower to come into, or if you, for example, uh, want to run on track, you would choose a little bigger exhaust housing so you have a more top end. On the street, usually a smaller exhaust housing drives a little better because you can have a little more response down low, still have most of the top end available if you choose the right turbo or right turbine in general. So saying this in conclusion, what should you do? Well, size your turbo to your horsepower goals and also your displacement. And this is basically the golden rule of thumb. Many people just say, well, choose the turbo according to your horsepower goals, but the displacement is also one thing that's really, really important to look out for. Because if you would go for an extreme example, you could use a big block V8 and strap a GT28 to it to make 500 horsepower, but the exhaust manifold back pressure would be so high that you would basically starve the engine of, uh, or create such a big restriction that there's not really a much to be had or um, the engine would just not run efficiently at all. So just choose carefully what you want and maybe not oversize it for your future power goals that you might be running someday, but choose the turbo for the power goals you have in mind right now and you want right now and for maybe in the next six months or so, but don't overdo it. That's it from me, as always. If you have some additions or something to add to this, leave it down in the comments below. And as always, I wish you a nice day and goodbye.